Okay, so um, I'm here, like Father Booth said, because I'm alumni, but also um, I struggle in my life. I've had some struggles. Uh, this homily is going to have some trigger words like panic attack, depression, Kennedy High School. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm here because I am an anxiety boy, too. I have been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and depressive disorder. So you may be asking yourself, how in the world does someone get up in front of 800 people and talk? Well, actually, this is where I mostly feel comfortable, actually. Um, lunch afterward, when I'm uh, mingling around and talking to you all, is when I'll be actually be very more and much more anxious. Um, I spent all my time at Xavier uh, being on stage or under it, uh, whether I was in choir or whether I was in the pit orchestra, uh, playing trumpet and doing everything that, basically I think I maxed out uh, the term band geek, uh, being in every single uh, musical ensemble. Um, I played uh, the best instrument, which is the trumpet. Okay, um, and uh, you uh, also may know my, uh, my brother, Mr. Rouse, Joshua, he's been here uh, as a sub. He's now teaching at um, another trigger word, uh, Regina High School in Iowa City. Um, anyway, he's doing well. So he's actually teaching uh, English, which is pretty fun. Um, so it's good to like, we're both encountering um, all sorts of people and having all sorts of adventures. Um, so to get back to why I'm here, um, I just, when Father Vu invited me to come preach at this mass about mental health, and mental health awareness, um, I thought it was kind of a no-brainer to be able to come and uh, share a little bit of my experience. Like I said, I was either on the stage or under the stage, always in front of people. I loved it because I loved it. I had a trumpet in front of my face, and I always had some smart, well-scripted words to say to everyone. Even though I was being watched and in front of everyone, I was always in control. Always in control when I'm on stage. They have to do whatever I say. But then when I'm at a pancake breakfast after mass or something and everyone's coming up and asking me things, then anything could happen. What if I disappoint them? Or what if I say something weird and they think I'm a weirdo or they think I'm like awkward or maybe I'm a mean priest or something? So I'm just horrified by those kind of social situations. So I realize as I go back and look back and reflect back to being in high school, some of the teachers may remember me being uh, happy and energetic and, you know, doing whatever they said and trying not to disappoint anyone, but also still being entertaining and having fun. I realized I was very, very happy in high school and on to in college, but I really, really didn't have any joy. I don't think I really had deep joy yet. As I go through um, high school and then college, and then I made up my mind to, uh, you know, be a famous trumpet player, I went to uh, the Holy Land. Um, University of Northern Iowa, and uh, studied music education for about two years, but then started to feel um, not really fulfilled. I lost even more happiness and joy, and then I finally decided to join seminary and go to priesthood. But as I went to priesthood, I realized, okay, I need to get serious about my life. I used to be a jazz musician, and jazz musicians are chill and don't care about anything, but now I need to be serious. I'm going to be in front of people. I need to preach well. I need to be holy, and I need to make God happy, otherwise I'm going to be a failure, and what's the point? I'll never forget uh, my first panic attack when I was, uh, we were all praying together in the chapel, and all of a sudden I just, we were just praying our normal psalms like we do every single day, and I just started to think, my mind snowballed and went to the biggest possible catastrophe, that I'm not going to be holy enough, and I'm a failure, and I'm disappointing everyone. And I felt my, te my, my chest tighten up and my throat closed, and I just had to leave. So in tears, I ran out of the room. And then uh, a seminarian brother, Aaron Junkie, uh, he graduated from here. He's a priest now. Uh, he came and scraped me off the floor and uh, helped me like, just start breathing and just feel calm. Um, so as I go, go through seminary, I started to have more and more of these attacks. In the chapel at night, we had a chapel in our house with the Blessed Sacrament, and I would be praying in front of that tabernacle and still just feel this piercing, awful, failure, disappointment mentality voices in my head. Not really like voices, but like just those, those, those uh, feelings of I am not good enough and just feeling dread come over me. 
I was talking to my spiritual director and I said, Father, I don't know what to do. Whenever I pray at night, I just feel these awful feelings. And he gave me the wisdom, well, don't pray at night then. Just pray in the morning. I said, okay, very good. Little helpful things along the way of people trying to, you know, do what's best for me. Like I would say, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel really anxious and I can't breathe and I don't know what's going on. It's, oh, oh, honey, just don't worry about it. Like, okay, thanks, Grandma. Why didn't I think of that? Okay, I'll just stop worrying about it. As seminary continued on, I'm going so high and being stressed and stressed, just finally would break. I would have panic attacks and then go right down into depressive episodes where not only am I not doing things perfectly enough, nothing's ever going to be perfect. So why even get out of bed? Why not just stay there the whole day? Oh, just cheer up. Look at the sunshine. There's so much to be happy about. Yeah, okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, why didn't I think of that? I'll just be happy now. Now, I started to realize there's, there's a lot that was not really clicking with me because these people, they were trying to care for me. They really didn't know how. And here I am thinking, what's wrong with me? I'm supposed to be a priest. I need to be perfect. So other people can, you know, look up to me and know that I'm not disappointing them and I'm a good father, etc., etc. So I, it wasn't until I finally reached out to someone in my hallway. I remember sitting outside of his room, just crying and shaking, just like, he's going to think I'm a weirdo. I can't tell him I'm struggling. And when I finally did, he heard me outside. He's like, what's going on? You're sitting out there in the dark. And he scraped me up off the floor, just as it's been done many times, and brought me in. And the best thing he did was listen. That's all he had to do. He didn't say, well, did you eat breakfast this morning? Or did you get enough sleep? Or you should try medication. The only thing he did was listen. And because I felt listened to, and because I told him all my crazy thoughts about how I thought I was a failure and thought I was disappointing everyone and God doesn't love me, he didn't say, whoa, 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 that's not true. All he did was open his ears and open his heart. His name was Father Kevin, and I went to school with him as well, and now he's a priest, brother priest with me as well. So what was the turning point for me? Because I'm, I'm a best friend with Jesus. He's supposed to be carrying me through all this. Like, why can't I just figure it out and get better? But the key was asking and reaching out to not only him, but to my parents, to my teachers, to an actual counselor, and seeking medication. See, when you read all the healing stories of Jesus in the Gospels, Sometimes he just holds up his hand and says, okay, be healed. Go on your way. Sometimes he touches them. Sometimes he spits in the ground and makes mud and then wipes it all over their eyes so that they can be healed. Every single person, every single one of you has a different way to be healed by Jesus. And when I found that Jesus, his grace works through not only people's listening ears, not only nice seminary professors, but his grace also works through medication prescribed by a doctor. His grace also works through counseling and therapy. I thought it was the weirdest thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to counseling, I'm going to therapy, psychotherapy, I don't want to go there. That's for weird people. And I realized that I, and normal. I was not okay, and that's okay. I thought that I was disappointing everyone, but that's not true. I thought in those moments of panic that I am going to die. Everything's over. My therapist helped me realize that what if I do disappoint people, or what if I, what if I annoyed my friends? What if I texted them too much? He says, well, you know, you probably did, because you're not perfect, you know? It's all right. I am an imperfect person, and that's why Jesus loves me. That's why Jesus chose me to be a priest, because he wanted to shine through all of my faults. Not that you know anything I've done is sinful. Well, yes, I am a sinner. But all these panic attacks, all these depressions, and all these different like feelings of despair, these are not my fault. This is the same as me having some sort of other illness or injury, you know? Why wouldn't you go get it treated? 
as I've gone through in seminary and graduated into priesthood, I still have these attacks sometimes. I still have these depressive episodes. But what I do have that I didn't have before is joy. I realized that Jesus, just as he says in the gospel, I want your joy to be complete. I no longer call you a slave. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm just asking you to stand up and be faithful. When Jesus tells me in the Gospels, he says, don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. I thought, how dare you? Don't tell me how to feel. I'm anxious right now. I'm afraid. But what he means by that, what our translation is of that means, you're going to be afraid but I'm going to be right there with you. I want you to take one step forward at a time because I'm going to be right there with you. And that's how I came to learn about Jesus as the healer. Everyone else in my life who didn't understand wanted to fix me. Well, if I fix him, then it'll all be better and we can move on with our lives. No, Jesus wants to heal me. He knows that I'm not all better. I'm pretty good at managing it now and I've got the skills and I've got support system. I've got a list of probably five or six really close friends, including my brother, that when I start to feel that panic, or I start to feel that depression, I can call or text them at any time, and they can help talk me out of some of the lies that I've allowed to be told to me. But through all these people, through all these symptoms, Jesus is right there. Not trying to fix, not trying to make me perfect. He's there to heal me, and accompany me. These feelings of anxiety, honestly, are to keep us alive. Are all, like our, um, th- there's a tiger in the room. So of course you're going to feel panic and anxiety because your body's trying to keep you alive. But what an anxiety disorder is, is it treats talking to someone at the pancake breakfast as there's a tiger in the room about to kill you. That's why it's called a disorder. And so to be able to acknowledge that and think, oh, okay, it's just the same as my joints not working or me having high blood pressure. We take medication, we manage it, and we continue to move on. So what I would like to leave you with and encourage you is that to truly feel joy, we look at the cross. Everyone turn around. Yep, turn around. Look at the cross up there. Okay, now look back at me. You see it. Very good. There's two beams. One goes up. One is your relationship with the Lord. And then it's not complete until the other side is filled. That is your relationship with each other. Not one of them by itself can really help because we, yes, are children of God and we're baptized and we're beautiful adopted sons and daughters of the Father. But he also gave us each other for us to be with and for us to be supported and listened to. He also gave us each other so that we can lift each other up towards the Lord. So I encourage you to find joy, open your ears to those around you, and open your hearts to trust. Whether or not some of these things are things that have affected you, or maybe they're completely foreign to you, that's okay, you have your own struggles as well. But to open your ears to those around you and open your hearts to trust, to reach out, to know that there's people who want to help you and people who want to see you lifted up and feel whole once again. Jesus is not just a fixer. He wants to heal us and walk with us. And that is one of the greatest gifts that we have, which we're about to celebrate in the Eucharist in just a few moments. Jesus becoming bread and being received by us, and being a healing person inside each one of us. And so we go forward, and we lift up our hearts, we open our ears, and we continue to trust in the Holy Spirit who gives us Jesus as our healer. Amen.